here's the topic that we entered in, entered into uh, Slack, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the actual script and here's the hook. This is the hook that um, GPT-4 chose. Are you trying to insert niche? Obviously, it's not niche, but then it's smart enough to know that we had said, why should I take a week of surfing lessons? So we know that we're in the surfing niche, if you will, right? So mm -hmm. what that GPT came up with was for that, that hook, are you trying to catch your first wave? It's very related, right? Yeah, I intention. I tried to make that hard. I tried to trip it up. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, that obviously neither of us have ever done this before. And it still delivered like an actual fire output that with a slight bit of polish, that would work. Yeah. And for the industry expert, they're going to know how to polish that, but they're not going to know how to come up with all of that structure, right? And weave all of those, say, things in. They may, but here's the thing. It takes the heavy lifting off of them. Right, it puts mm -hmm. out another, another tool to be able to pump out those uh, those scripts. So when it comes to the editing process, the reason why we do it in certain ways, because on the back end, our editing team understands the framework in terms of how we're having our clients record, or even we record ourselves, and then they know what to expect in terms of that raw footage, and then they can use uh, our editing process to then trim it down and make sure that it plays nicely with the social media platforms. One, being concise and being under that 30 or 60 seconds, but two, also making sure that we have the editing style that we want in place. Mm -hmm. and, and in terms of editing style, that's important because, you know, like we said before, the average view time is going to be one of like the, the major components of like how valuable TikTok or Instagram or whatever finds your video. If people watch it for 25, 30, 45 seconds, that lets them know they should show it to more people who are interested in surfing because clearly it's a valuable resource. Yeah. So um, if you think about that game, right, then it's a volume play. So yeah. now if we, if we think about it, how do I map this type of a business to then also play nicely on vertical video? The reason why I say that is because it's not a specific platform because all of the major platforms right now are taking vertical video. Hmm. Yeah, so like, uh, as I'm just thinking of like a sample editing here, and we won't even get into editing today. Uh, but in essence, I can already see that video. It's somebody talking there, maybe they're sitting on the beach saying like, you, know, you want to catch your, I forget what the, the readout was, but essentially like, want to catch you know, your first wave, or want to like catch that? your first wave, you know, water comes in, you show like a two, three second surfing montage that really gets people kind of tied in. And then somebody sitting at the beach, whether, you know, they could be in the water on their board, given the rest of the speech, they could just be at home and talking over surfing clips. It could be, you know, any other version of that that gets them there. Um, and essentially just showing the business owner and surfing together, newbie surfing, so that they are automatically just associated with like, you want to learn how to surf? I have the answer for this because right. we're giving them the visuals that would, would indicate that. Um, in a future podcast, we'll get into this, you know, essentially one of the things that has absolutely changed my life is realizing that when I outsource work, you know, in the past, you'd think like outsourced work is essentially going to get you like a lower quality return on what you would have done yourself, which is absolutely the wrong way to think of it. Because in 2023, you can find, you know, like cutting edge, you know, like to call somebody a video editor isn't doing it justice. You're, you're like basically hiring a surgeon, you know, people who have, you know, advanced degrees in this, who are able to come up with stuff that there is absolutely no way in the world I could have done on my own. And just like, you know, hiring a professional there, not necessarily on a full-time position, hiring somebody to come in like an assassin, bump up these round of videos for you is extremely affordable and completely pays for itself in terms of like, you know, basically client success. So yeah, what I'm taking away from this really, um, I already, I know this, I know when the first time I stepped in front of a camera and I just kind of got over myself, it changed my business. It changed my life. It all of a sudden people started coming to me instead of me having to reach out to them. But the hardest part that I always had was like, all right, one, the hardest part was turning on the camera on any given day. Cause like when you turn it on, you know, this is the next two hours of your life. And then right after I turn it on, I could probably get through the first one, but then I didn't know what to do for the next six fucking speeches. So what you're saying here is by using the zap, the way that you've constructed it, you are essentially giving somebody like 10 pieces of content 
maybe as hooks or just jump off points or maybe the exact script that they're going to use, but it's a way to condense it. Like how much time would you think it, it takes you to get like, you know, 10 to 15 pieces of content from somebody? Yeah, my best clients, um, when they were doing this at scale, um, when we first started doing this, the very first few sessions of batching, they would take them about an hour to film 15 reels, 30, 60 second reels. So if it's taking them an hour and you're, for example, doing one a day, mm-hmm. would you invest two hours a month to have all of your short form content done for that month? Mm-hmm. That's the playbook. That's what we wanted to do. Cause I know all of these people are busy professionals. And if that's the case, t- time is money for all of us. So then how do we shorten that process and that learning curve? So if we take that and we basically sequence that stuff, but we batch it, here's your list of 15 topics. Here's your list of 15 scripts, right? Now you're ready. So then when you do go and you lock yourself in your room, right? For an hour, you're done. Now you have, you send that batch recording over to our editing team or your editing team that's been trained on that process. And then they circle back and you have 15. So as a business owner, I don't have 30 pieces of content. I mean, like I can't talk about 30 separate things every single month. Do I double back on it? Like, how do I, like running a digital marketing agency, there's probably 10 things that we actually do. Sure. So what, do I double them next month? Do I, do I just do the same script? Do I find a different jump off? Like, how do I keep content coming? And, and is the content focused? Like just making 15 pieces of content isn't cool. I'd assume they, they're supposed to follow a trajectory. Um, well, it depends on how you want to look at it. But if you do only offer, say, a limited amount of services, which you should, um, there's 105 different hooks, right, that you can use to create these scripts. So if there were 10 things that you're talking about, I'm sure you can unpack that into subtopics as well. And that's why we leverage Google and ChatGPT, because you should be saying the same thing in so many different ways because of the different audiences that you're trying to reach, right? Not every personality is the same. Timing, circumstances, and the way you say things changes all, right? So if there's a different way in which something caught your attention because of the way it was framed or the timing of that, give yourself that opportunity. In addition to that too, we we do not have the time to talk about it in this podcast episode, but you think about this, all of those things, you're giving yourself an opportunity to, to win, So once you have this video content library out there working on your behalf, all of the winners that you have, why don't you, why wouldn't you put some money behind those so that they're consistently getting in front of your ideal audience? Because you've already utilized the the organic algorithm to prove and to select and your winners. So within now this round of winners, put some money behind those. Hmm. Absolutely. And so then I guess it comes down to just, you know, if you're making the content, the content has a purpose. So the way that you select the winner is, you know, whether it's based on views, on shares, on likes, on whatever, but they should definitely be driving people to a certain outcome. Like, Absolutely. honestly, like it comes down to, did this drive new business for me? Well, did back this- to no like, and trust new business. Right. And then we talk about it in the stages of the content marketing funnel as well. There's no like, and trust there's top of funnel, middle funnel, bottom of funnel, whatever it is, you have a certain outcome. But in this specific episode, we're talking about short form video that should be engaging, right? That ultimately is watch time first, right? Every other Mm -hmm. domino will fall after that, that one thing does, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do is take, get as many at bats as possible so that we can find out where our winners are with you, with with those winners, then we dissect them. And that's why the quality actually matters, right? Like we're looking for watch town, like essentially we we're looking for no right now know like a little bit of trust because you're you're demonstrating your expertise but essentially like if you show up with like a crispy camera and your audio is on point and your hook works even if i scan by it i still know that tom tran is the guy that knows about like video and stuff yep all right uh well do you have anything else you want to kind of throw into our our short form video how you can produce high quality content at scale you know quickly I know you're going to have questions. I know it. I absolutely do. No matter where you are in in the the stage of your content creation process and and journey. So feel free to reach out so we can help unpack and, and, and just help you along that way. Right. What if I want, what if I want that zap off you? What, how do I get that zap? And I'm not contact us, contact us and wherever you're seeing this right now, reach out to us and we'll take care of you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Tom, thank you for that. That's, um, 
you know, like I said, I use it in my business already, but getting a little bit of the fundamentals behind that really kind of helps me out and understand why it works. Um, absolutely. If you need this for your business, if you think being able to produce, you know, 10 scripts in less than a minute would be effective for you uh, on any topic, absolutely hit us up in the con in the comments down below. We'll let you know, or you can just find Tom on tntdigitalmarketing.com. Um, past that episode 11, it's a wrap. We're in the books and we'll see you next week for episode number 12. Later.